exclusive. Yo, Red Eye, this your boy Ice Cube. Check out Straight Out of Compton, August 14th, and get some goddamn visine. <laughs> What's going on, Red Eyes, O'Shea Jackson Jr.? Check out Straight Outta Compton August 14th because you're not doing anything else. Gotta start with a hard question. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be better this year, Raiders or Bears? <laughs> Raiders. <laughs> Raiders. Raiders. No doubt? No <laughs> doubt. We looking good, man. You know, look like we finally got a coach, finally got a coaching staff, got a quarterback, got a wide receiver. It's like, man, get cool, that defense, man. defense short up. Get the D line right, we'll be alright. What is it like to have a good quarterback? I'm not familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys got a Jay Cutler, was it? Not a fan. Yeah, he's a good one. He's just uh, not my fantasy team. He just <laughs> takes, <laughs> takes too many chances. That's all. For sure. Uh, well, Shay, you've talked about uh, sort of developing an obsession for games as part of being like no one else should play except yeah. for me. How did that impact you? Was that like waking up in night sweats? Following your dad around, like, taking notes on things you've observed your whole life. How, what was the impact of that it session? Was, it was really, uh, it was on my head a lot, you know. A lot of a lot of nights of watching movies, trying to take stuff from other actors, you know. Like, I, I watched, uh, and, and it's, it's all due to my acting coaches as well. I had two years of at different coaches and classes giving me things to study, giving me homework to do. And it really, obsession is the perfect word, you know. It, it really became something that I'd made everything about, you know. I had to lose weight to look right, you know. I, I flew to New York to be with another coach and just was prepared to give everything for this role because it meant everything to me. Uh, do you think it's a good idea or a bad idea for you to have a son who then plays you in a movie about his dad playing his grandpa. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely went for yeah. yeah. Today is yesterday's <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Might get a little complicated, but I feel like there was, there must have been that sense of weirdness at some point making this movie because like, there's a moment where you're like, I got a baby on the way. And it's Correct. me. Yes. I think I don't know if this has ever happened in Hollywood before, no you know, but um, yes, yeah, you know it's interesting on so many levels. It's uh, you know a, a story winding in on itself. Um, you know, it's just man, pinch me. Well, what was the mm -hmm. most surreal aspect of that for you to see your son playing you and, and going through the things that you went through? I uh, just seeing him perform, seeing him get on stage and and. Um, and really kind of morph into me on stage. And it's, it's just incredible to watch. It's, uh, I can't put it in words. You know, it's just like, I guess every parent will understand, you know, the feeling of how you feel when your kid steps up. And when he, when he, when he gives his all and he does a great job, you just proud, you know, and for this, I mean, it's so close to me, so close to our family. It's got to do with legacy and everything, and for him to step up, you know, for me and the family like that, you know, I could never repay him. What's a moment, if ever, for either of you that was felt difficult because it was something that maybe you look back on as, like, not something you're as? Like, if there's anything... Assuming that everything in the movie happened, as I suspect most of it did, since mm -hmm. you're a producer on this, you know the story, it happened to you, like, you know, smashing priority records with the baseball bat. Did mm -hmm. that happen the way we see it in the movie? Yeah. Is that, was something like that hard either for you to see your son reenacting something you did, or for you to be doing that and know that your father actually did something like that? Like, is there a feeling of... It was actually fun for me to watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because... Just to see it reenacted, just to see how they shot it, you know, uh, in, in real life things maybe are a little different, but when you shoot it and you shoot it in a theatrical way and you uh, you set up great shots and you capture it, you know, it's, it's, it's another special feeling. 
So I just enjoy watching it. You know, it's nothing that I was worried about, cringing over, or embarrassed for him to know about me. You know, it was just really about enjoying the awesome job that everybody did and um, and being so proud of it that, you know, uh, this is my most important movie that, that I've ever produced. Sure. What, what about you, Shay? Did you have any of those? In that, that particular scene, the office scene, is, you know, I was very passionate about that scene. I fought for that scene. You know, I understand how movies work. I understand that you can have everything that you shoot. But that scene, you know, I, I needed it because it, it meant a lot to, not only to the, to the film, but to my family, you know, that represents my father's boiling point. And I think you can see the passion I have during that scene. Oh, yeah, know? you really go to town with <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, two takes. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I, I, I fought for that scene. You know, it was very important to me to have this movie authentic. You know, it has to be authentic. It has to be what really happened because those who don't know are going to take this movie for its word. You know, they're going to, this is their book of NWA. So it had to be right. The scene on the bus when the guys come on uh, with guns and tell everyone <laughs> to. I think the line is gang bang them books. Yeah. Uh, did that happen that way? And what was going through your head as that was happening, if so? Yeah, it did happen that way. You know, I was nervous. You know what I mean? I thought they was going to shoot the whole bus up. You know, we didn't know what they was going to do. Uh, and, you know, it's just the reason we put it in the movie because we wanted to show the, the obstacles, the reasons why this music came to life the things that we were seeing and going through, the situations that we were up against. Um, and we're not unique. It's not like this just happened to Cube, this just happened to Cube, uh, Easy and Dre. It's happened to all the kids in our neighborhood. This happened to everybody around that time. So we just showed that, you know, five guys became constructive and not destructive. Even though we were living in a in a hardcore situation, you know, we didn't turn that into destruction. We turned it into construction. We did something good. We made music. We created. We had fun. We didn't just soak in it and let it consume or define us. And um, and you know, the movie shows all that. Mm -hmm. and, um, we wanted to show people the crazy kind of stuff that we had to go through. And these are just moments, you know. It's like, you know, trying to put all the shit we went through in, in, into a movie, it would have been a miniseries. Yeah, I mean, 15-season yeah. TV show. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, all the details. Uh, what's the, is there something especially crazy that comes to mind that part of you is like, man, I wish we could have gotten that in there? Well, you know, it's, it's a few things that, you wish you could have, we could have got in, you know, but you don't want to hold people hostage with a movie, you know. <laughs> you want them to enjoy it. You want them to, to, to get what you're trying to say and go enjoy the rest of their day and hopefully maybe see it again. So we knew that the running time had to be something that people could digest. Sure. And um, so we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't go into everything that happened. We just we, we, we hit a little broad strokes to let people know what it was like. How old were you when you started uh, memorizing dad's lyrics? Oh man, well, when I was young, like single digits, I would say my favorite, uh, my favorite record of his at the time was Bow Down, the West Side Connection record. So that's like the first one I remember knowing all the words to. But, you know, as I got into my teens, you know, I started to really dab into all the music, the NWA, and I really didn't, fully see what it meant for him to be Ice Cube till I was about 18 and I got to go on tour and, and talk to people how he impacted their lives from California, you know, from him doing music and I really started to get the idea of what it meant and to be able to do this movie and, and to see how much love is behind it just further pushes that. Kid, what do you remember of those early days when he was single digits and <laughs> going around doing your songs? Yo, it was the craziest when they were the youngest, you know, for us. You know, we was going through 
a lot of different beefs, you know, with different crews and you know, it was it was thick, you know, and they was young, you know, uh, him and my other son. You know, we talking two, three, four, five, and you know, we going through it in the streets for real. So, um, it's cool that we lived through all that and you know, he's of age and we can go on tour and I can show him a little bit of of you know, what I've become and you know, what I'm still striving to be. Uh, and, you know, it's just a real good thing. You know, I, I'm real, you know, happy and satisfied that that I could take my sons with me. Uh, I see a lot of a lot of dudes on tour. They don't have, they don't have a family with them at all, you know, and uh, it's cool just to have my sons. Sometimes I take my pops, you know, my wife when she want to go. It's just really, you know, been a family family affair for real and uh you know i'm appreciative of it uh there's a funny scene where, where when easy starts trying to rap for the first time and he's pretty bad at it mm-hmm. can anyone rap if they just put a little effort into it yeah i think i think anybody can rap you know but but, but, but can anybody make a hit song no yeah. and i think anybody can rap but not everybody can make a hit song it's a true statement right there you know rap is a it's got a lot to do with your confidence, you know, and uh, some people could be overconfident. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean overconfident? You know, it just just goes back to the, you know, <laughs> anybody can rap, it's just hard to make a, a hit, you know. Uh, but it's, it's, I would say rap is 60 confidence and 40 skill, you know. It, it, a lot of people will be great writers but they they can't deliver you know that you might get a ghost writer that way or somebody who you know got lyrics but can't necessarily push it or, and vice versa you know so it, it's about your confidence but rapping is it is a real art you know I can't just paint a you know a masterpiece you know you really got to put the time in you really got to put the effort in how many times have you guys tried to battle rap against each other <laughs> oh, everyone never never, never. We don't same team, right? Each other. Yeah, we're in the same squad. Do you ever just were there ever times where you just hung out and were throwing it back and forth, not as a battle, but just as kind of the same way, like if you were uh, musicians, you know, playing drums and guitar, you messed up <laughs> oh, yeah. growing up. I mean, you know, not really. You know, they they kind of got their own flavor. I got my own flavor. You know, what I mean, you know, I cipher with the with the OGs. You know, they do their ciphers with the youngsters. So, you know, what I mean, we we still. We still in different uh, age brackets. We still in different different lanes when it comes Kobe, to that. Kobe and Magic. Kobe you know, and Magic. Yeah, yeah. But who wouldn't want to see them play together? Check us they out. Can on check tour. us out on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get on stage. We do it. Uh, some people were talking on social media this weekend. Uh, the Pitchfork Music Festival was happening. Um, I was there two days, but not on Sunday when Freddie Gibbs performed. Um, who, of course, I mean, his whole career is just telling stories from his experience um, and people were talking on social media that at one point uh, during his set there was like a big chant of the mostly white crowd shouting fuck the police mm, yeah what what's your reaction when you like think of that image I mean everybody hates corrupt police man everybody yeah. it's not a certain age group you know if you if you ask anybody that know what the police do and ask them, do you like a corrupt cop? Every, every one of them is going to say no. So it's a universal thing. Uh, and I, I wish the good cops would step up and point out the bad cops and not just let them continue to, to do what they do. You know, step up, man. Let's clean this thing up. You know what I mean? And Because those bad cops is, is giving all cops a, a bad name. So... You know, I wish the good cops step up and, and clean all those bad apples out they department and and serve the people like we deserve. This seems like a movie that uh, in its edited for TV version might not connect as much if it's like, you know, just like CeeLo going from a song called Fuck You to Forget You, like yeah. Forget the Police sort of mm-hmm. gets a little softer. Uh I think it's still gonna translate. You know, we've we we were able to make radio versions 
to some of these songs, so I'm pretty sure we can make a TV version <laughs> to this movie. Uh, something I talked about uh, just now with, with Gary and Jason is this notion of um, kind of people judging rap only similarly with like you, where you're just saying the bad cops kind of ruining it for the good cops. How much do you think that happens with rap where people are like, oh, rap is terrible. There's so many people out there um, who don't listen to it because they only look at the bad examples. Is there something that gets on your nerves? Um, any one or any like kind of a subgenre that you wish would kind of stop giving everyone a bad name? Not really. You know, it's, it's like, you know, artists is artists, man. You know, all artists shouldn't walk to the beat of the same drum. And, you know, some artists go too far with it, you know, with the, with the gangster rap. And, you know, some of it's nonsense. Some of it's good, good lyrics, good storytelling, good subject matter, good rhyming. You know, so it's the, it's the to me, the, the difference between, you know, a newspaper and a comic book. You know, you have everything in between. Uh, and they all can talk about the same subject matter. You can talk about a gun in the newspaper. You can talk about a gun in the comic book. You know, one of them you should probably take more serious than the other. And I think sophisticated rap fans know who the who the clowns are and who the uh, the real guys with with courage and something to say are. You know, it's it's the it's the casual rap fan who don't know the difference and. They're a casual fan anyway, so you shouldn't put too much time and effort into convincing them what gangster rap is and what it should be. Yeah, every genre has its bad songs. You know? Every <laughs> like, there's no, there's no denying that you know you can't just generalize a whole genre based on a couple of songs. It's just like uh, you know you said it, the casual rap fan, and, and in sports, if you look at somebody's highlight reel. They ain't got their bricks in there, you know, so they look like the best player, you know. So if you're looking at nothing but the worst songs, you know, that reflects badly on the genre. And, you know, you need to do your research, you know, watch some more game film a little bit and then realize what you got. Are there any artists, rappers, or otherwise that people might be surprised to know that you know some of their lyrics? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say surprised, you know. I, I mean, I got my, my artists that I listen to the the people that I, I'm on right now would probably be uh, Big Sean and J. Cole. You know, though they definitely got something to say when I when I get their albums and but nothing nobody, you know, would be surprised about. What about you, Q? It's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> <laughs> nothing new. What do you think of this business idea? Uh, like a box of like fake microphones that people can go around so every time they want to leave a situation they can just say something <laughs> drop the, drop the mic drop the mic <laughs> how effective would that be I think you get a few people to buy it yeah, be good. <laughs> drop <Yeah>. the mic <laughs> the mic got to shatter it off yeah shit <laughs> great yeah. it doesn't if it just hits the ground softly and you can't even hear it nah it's not gonna so they should be glass bit. is what you're saying gotta hey. be as long as it's shattered I ain't trying to pick it back up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something in this movie was uh, kind of making me wonder is why do you think that all the contract stuff happened the way that it did? Um, I don't know. I think you got to really ask Jerry Heller. You know, um, I really don't know. You know, they they didn't have a sign at first, and they waited r really late in the game to start trying to get a sign. By that time, I figured out it just wasn't right. So, I, you know, I don't know. You know, to me, you pay people what you own, keep them happy, and you stay together. You know what I mean? You, you get greedy, and you break up. And it's been like that forever in the music business. So, you know, if I felt like I was being paid right or correctly, I would have stayed, no problem. Is there anything you wish you would have done differently at any point in that whole process? Probably, you know, I think just held easy a little more accountable for what happened and really kind of 
push to him to solve it and not just deal with Jerry. Uh, I mean, I dealt with Easy a little bit, but it was kind of too late. Everybody had dug into their positions. You know, so I just wish I'd have went with him to him a little earlier. But <clears throat> to be honest, I'm glad everything happened like it did because I wouldn't be the solo artist I became. I wouldn't, I don't, I don't think I would do movies or be a producer right now. So, you know, I'm kind of glad it did work out like it did. And uh, that's why I'm sitting right here and able to produce straight out of Compton. What's an untold story about, uh, some, something that came up when you and uh, Dre were talking about this movie. And when is his new album coming out? The new album will be out uh, August 1st. <clears throat> so soon. Yeah, he's going to drop the whole album. I'm excited for that uh, now. Yeah, yeah, so that's dope. Um, you know, we just talked about not messing it up. And we can't mess it up. And it has to be great. You have me, Dre, and Gary Gray working on this movie. It has to be great. There's no excuses we can think of that's going to be sufficient if we mess this up. So, you know, we just knew the pressure was on and uh, we delivered. Shay, what was it like for you as you were uh, growing up and seeing how much your dad's career was changing? Um, although I also remember when you were here before and we, we talked about a little about NWA, you told me, like, you were watching movies like Home Alone in the NWA era, um, mm -hmm. People people didn't know what your real life was actually like. You know, people get a certain version um, from the record or something like that. As as he was moving into different types of movies, some of the family stuff, uh, you well, being 12 years old, what was it like to see those changes? Well, you know, the thing is, I'm, I'm going to go back. I was, I've was i been watching the movies the whole time. It, it, it's not a change. It's just the same guy. Just more than what people think. You know, it's like, if you look at any artist and you try to say, well, this artist is like that, if you really get a chance to be with that person or hang with that person, you'll see that they're 10 times more than what you see. So, you know, it's not like I changed my ways. That's always been a part of me. You know, all of this has always been a part of me uh, from day one. Uh, so from now on, you can ask me questions. <laughs> um, well, you know, I'm born in 1991. That's the time of Boys in the Hood. So I was born with his movie career. You know, I've always seen him in movies on big screens, things like that. Now, as far as uh, uh, later films or seeing him, you know, Triple X, where he's an action star, Three Kings blew up a helicopter with a football, you know, it's just seeing like, I get to, I'm seeing him as an artist, you know, with a, a different branch of art, you know, with the, with the film, with cinema, show his range, you know, and, and grow his empire, and it's been a fun ride, you know, I'm trying to put my piece of history in. So how much has this activated your interest in uh, continuing to act, do other roles that maybe you'd have to... Oh, I'm, I'm here, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely here, uh, I went to school for screenwriting, so I feel like I know what goes into a movie or and, and the things that I, I like to see, you know, and uh, I want Straight Outta Compton to be my door opening to, uh, to a long lasting career. What do you think is tougher, uh, making a name for yourself uh, in the music industry or movie industry? Um, movie industry. <laughs> movie. How come? Because you're at the mercy of the industry. You know, you're at the mercy of someone or some people believing in you and giving you a shot. With music, you can take your own shot. You can go make your own record. You can put your own record out. You know, it's a new, it's a, it's a new day for music. You, can, you don't have to have a team. You don't even have to have a record company to have a hit. So I just think it's easier because you can do it by yourself uh, if you needed to. Uh, movies, you can't do it by yourself at all. How much do you think the result of that? I feel like the like there's more music out there, more people can connect with just by uploading something, but the longevity seems to be shrinking. Well, that, you know, th 
you you actually how to make a name for yourself. I just think it's easier in music. <laughs> now how you keep your name rolling, that's a whole nother uh class. That's a whole nother yeah, yo, that's a whole yeah, that's you know, a whole yeah. nother uh, session. You know, so you know, uh it, it's it's a lot of different ways to try to stay on top. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple options. Uh, please feel free to take advantage of any of these that you like. Can you either uh, quote a movie that you love, tell me the worst pickup line you've ever heard, or do the best impersonation that you have of somebody? Uh, my favorite movie, for sure. Uh, Big Lebowski. Big Lebowski. When that song wrote, throw in the remote, you know? That, that movie is... It's a comedy that is such a simple plot that, like, it is just ridiculous how funny and how much it snowballs perfect movie so what's your favorite quote from there my favorite quote uh it's in the beginning of the movie you know it's kind of a little smart ass remark but it really got me glued into the movie when i first saw it uh they're trashing jeff bridges house jeff lebowski they're trashing his house and shit and then uh the dude one of the thugs in there pulls out a bowling ball he's like the fuck is this and Jeff hits him, well, you're obviously not a golfer. And, you know, it's just like little smart shit like that that I've always kind of had a, a pull to that witty wordplay and stuff like that and, and dialogue. So, you know, a little something for his favorite movie. Uh, I guess I go with the worst pickup line I've ever heard. Uh, <laughs> the worst pickup line I've ever heard was, are you from Memphis? Because you're the only 10 I see. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Terrible. That ass. sucks. Ass. <laughs> that sucks. 